Good morning and welcome to today's session on DNA mutants. My name is Dr. Adel Abassi and we'll be looking at DNA mutations today. So in the previous videos we've looked at DNA replication, transcription and translation. So today we'll be looking at what happens when something goes wrong in one of these processes. So firstly, what is a mutation? So a mutation is defined as a change in the DNA sequence of an organism. And these mutations can arise from errors within DNA replication process during cell division exposure in mutagenic agents or viral infections. So there are a couple of different types of mutations. So firstly, looking at germline mutations, these occur in the eds and the sperm and can be passed on to the offspring during meiosis. There's also other mutations such as somatic mutations which occur in body cells which are not passed on. So mutations can occur in somatic cells like muscle cells or skin cells and can only affect the cell where the mutation has occurred and cells that grow from that cell. But where the mutations occur in germline cells, eds and sperm, they'll be present in every cell that develops from that egg or sperm at an entire, an, an, on an entire person and can have larger effects. So look at the types of changes in DNA. So DNA in any cell can be altered through environmental exposure to various chemicals such as ultraviolet radiation or any aerogenic protein replication. So as mentioned before, you can have germline mutations or somatic mutations. In the germline, the developing embryo will carry the mutation Somatic mutations are found elsewhere in the organism's body. So that occurs during mitosis, the somatic. Yeah. So one, one example I'm going to talk about in the next few slides is sickle cell anemia, which results as a change of a single nucleotide. And it's, it's what you call a point mutation because only one has been changed there. So changes of the DNA sequence can also occur at the level of the chromosome in which large segments of chromosomes are altered. So what this means is that deletion can occur, duplication, uh, inversion or translocation of different chromosomes where the fragment where this affects the fragments or it can be rearranged which leads to changes such as modification or the gene dosage the complete absence of a gene or the alteration of the gene sequence so the type of variation that occurs when entire areas of chromosomes are duplicated or lost this is known as copy number variation and this is very important and this has very important uh, implications for human disease and evolution so to give a bit of detail about mutations, I'm going to use the example of sickle cell anemia. Yeah. So currently within the human genome, there's three billion nucleotides, and even a single change in a base pair results in issues or malfunctions. So the alteration of a single nucleotide in a gene for the beta chain of the hemoglobin protein. So the hemoglobin protein is the oxygen carrying protein which makes red blood cells. As it takes turns to as it as all it takes is for a normal hemoglobin gene into a sickle cell hemoglobin gene. So beta hemoglobin is a single chain of 147 amino acids. So these molecules of sickle cell hemoglobin, these stick to one another forming rigid rods. And these rods can cause a person's red blood cells to take on a, a malformed shape in the shape of a sickle. And that's why this, it's called sickle cell anemia. So cause the shape's changed, they don't carry oxygen well and they tend to block capillaries which causes a, a which causes effects to people's blood, uh, blood cell supply and uh, the blood to be cut off to various tissues including the brain and the heart resulting in stroke or death etc yeah so let's have a look at a mutation here right so let's look at the wild type hemoglobin sequence when we say wild type we say normal yeah disease free normally so you've got valine histine leucine threonine proline proline glutamine Glutamine, lysine, serine, alanine, valine, and ferionine. Yeah, but in the mutant, we'll see we've got valine, histine, leucine, ferionine, proline, valine, glutamine, lysine, serine, alanine, valine, ferionine. Now, see here, we, in the wild type, you've got glutamine, but it's been replaced by valine here. So instead of a GAG, you've got a GTG. So, that is a single base pair nucleotide ch change, single base nucleotide change, it's a substitution. But that one change has resulted in sickle cell anemia for this sequence. So the GAG has went to GTG, GTG. So let's have a look at the different type of mutations here, right? So you've got three types, we've got three classes of mutations. You've got point mutations, chromosomal mutations, and copy number variation. So looking firstly at a point mutation, so you have substitution, insertion, deletion, inversion, and deletion. Yeah, so in the substitution, one base pair, one base is correctly and can added during replication and replaces the pair in the corresponding position. 
for example, the, what we looked at was sickle cell anemia in the previous slide. So the GAG became GTG. So that's a substitution point mutation. Then you have an insertion mutation where that can result in beta thalassemia, where you have one or more extra nucleotides inserted into the replicating DNA. So imagine a sequence as ATG, and then you just add in an A, and it becomes ATA. That will become then coded for ATA and not ATG. That's an insertion mutation. Contrastingly, you have deletion, which can result in cystic fibrosis. So if you have the ATG and you delete the G, and then it becomes ATA from the next codon, it will be one or more nucleotides is skipped during the replication or otherwise it's sized, resulting in a frame shift mutation. So the deletion is a frame shift and so is the insertion, a frame shift point mutation. Then you have inversion, where one region of the chromosome is flipped and reinserted. And that could result in a uh, some, uh, disease called opitz cavagia syndrome. Then you have deletion of the chromosome region resulting in the absence of all genes in that area. And that can result in Cleide Chat syndrome. Now these are point mutations. Yeah? So you've got point, frame set point mutations such as substitution, insertion, deletion. Yeah. Frame shifts. Then you have chromosomal mutations such as duplication and translocation. So in duplication, a region of the chromosome is repeated, resulting in an increase in dosage on the genes in that region, and that leads to cancer, some types of cancers. Then you have translocation, in which a region from one chromosome is attached to another chromosome, and that can result in leukemia. Then for copy number variation, you have gene amplification, in which the number of tandem copies of a locus is increased, resulting in breast cancer. And then you also have expanding time nucleotide repeat. So one of the most famous ones for this is Huntington's disease, in which the normal of number of repeated time nucleotide sequences expanded. So I think for Huntington's, it's CAG, CAG, CAG. So you've got so it happened, it repeats three times in Huntington's. So let's have a look at the type of germline mutations, somatic mutations. You have autosomal dominant, where the gene for a trait or condition is dominant and is on an X non sex chromosome. You have autosomal recessive where the gene for a trait or condition is recessive and is on a non-sex chromosome. You have X-linked dominant where the gene for a trait or condition is dominant and is on the X chromosome. You have X-linked recessive where the gene for a trait or condition is recessive and is on the X chromosome. You have Y-linked where the gene for a trait or condition is on the Y chromosome. You have co-dominance where each allele in a gene pair carries equal weight and produces a combined physical characteristic. For example, the AB blood group. And then you have mitochondrial, where the gene of a trait or condition is in your mitochondrial DNA, which sits in the mitochondria powerhouse of your cells. So, to talk about this very briefly, dominant is like, I'll make another video on this in, uh, about genetics in this sense, yeah? But dominant is like, where you have the gene, so if it's like big D, small D, big B, small B, yeah? That is dominant, or if it's two big Bs, that can give you brown eyes, blue eyes, etc. Recessive is where you have the two small genes, and then the excellent is whether it's on a, on a sex chromosome or not. Because remember, we have 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. So how do mutations occur? As mentioned previously, DNA in this any cell can be altered by a number of factors, including environmental influences, setting chemical spontaneous mutations, or errors in the replication process. So looking at the mutations from the environment, DNA interacts with the environment, and that can result in de detrimental genetic information. One example is ultraviolet light from the sun, which can cause mutations in skin cells. So, you have one type of UV generating mutation which involves the hydrolysis of a cytosine base to a hydrate form, causing the base to mispair with adenine during the next round of replication and ultimately be replaced by thymine. The UV light can also cause covalent form bonds to be formed between adjacent pyrimidine bases, resulting in formation of pyrimidine dimers. Repair machinery also exists with these mutations, but it is prone to error, which means that some dimers do go unrepaired. Furthermore, looking at the condition Xeroderma pigmentosum XP, which is an inherited genetic disorder, this involves mutations in the genes that code for the proteins involved in repairing UV light damage. If this is damaged, then people have high frequency mutations in skin cells, which can lead to a high recurrence of skin cancer. This means that individuals cannot go outdoors during daylight hours. As well as this ionizing radiation in the form of cosmic rays, gamma rays, and X rays, these can cause double stranded DNA to break, and the resulting repair can likewise introduce into mutations if it is not carried out properly. But however, radiation can penetrate tissue well, 
So these can cause mutations in the body with the ultraviolet light only attached to skin cells. Mutations can also be caused by chemicals. So you have oxidizing agents known as free radicals, which are substances which chemically modify nucleotides in ways which alter their base pair capacities. For instance, you have dioxin, which intercalates between these pairs, which disrupts the DNA integrity, the DNA helix integrity. And then you have benzopyrene, which is a carcinogen, causes cancer, and a component of cigarette smoke, which has been shown to induce lesions at guanine bases in the tumor suppressor gene P53 at codons 157248 and 273. Mutations such as these, which are specific to particular mutagens, are known as signature mutations. A variety of chemicals beyond these mentioned in this slide are known to induce these types of mutations. You also have spontaneous mutations which occur spontaneously. For example, depurination in which a purine base is lost from a nucleotide through hydrolysis, even though the sugar phosphate backbone is unaltered, can occur without a, without a, uh, without trigger from the environment. If this isn't corrected by DNA repair enzymes, depurination can result in a cooperation with incorrect base during the next round of DNA replication. So, how do these errors during DNA replication? These these can play important roles in some mutations, especially as I mentioned in previous slides about time nuclear repeat expansion, such as Huntington's disease. So. The ability of repeat sequences to form secondary structures such as interstand hairpins during replication could contribute to the slippage of DNA polymerase, causing this enzyme to slide back and repeat replication previous segment. So in the Huntington's you have the CAG, CAG, CAG. Lagging strand synthesis has been shown to be particularly sensitive to repeat expansion. So the lagging strand involves Okazaki fragments, as if you've been watching my previous videos. So you have an enzyme called FEN1, which is needed for proper resolution of the Okazaki fragments generated due to the lagging strand replication. So if you don't, if you have a mutation of FEN1, this increases the expansion of CAG repeats. Repeats can also occur in non-mitotic mitotic tissue, and they have been shown to accumulate in mice defective for individual DNA repair pathways, which and also there have been studies that have shown that increased repeat stability. Following the induction of double standard breaks and UV induced lesions are corrected by nucleotide excision repair. So, currently, all these diseases associated with uh, tandem nuclear repeats provide instability upon transmission from parent to offspring. So, as I mentioned about the CAG repeats in Huntington's disease, so this is inherited paternally. And this occurs prior to meiosis. The final thing I would like to talk about is something called single nucleotide polymorphisms. So while, the mutation, while a mutation is defined as any alteration in DNA sequence, biologists use the term single nucleotide polymorphism, otherwise known as SNPs, to refer to a single base pair alteration that is common in the population. So a polymorphism is any genetic location at which two different sequences are found, with each sequence present at least 1% of the population. Polymorphism is generally used to refer to a normal variation or one that does not directly cause disease. These are important markers or signposts for scientists to use when they look at populations of organisms in an attempt to find genetic changes that predispose individuals to certain traits including disease. So currently in the human body, there are 1,000 to 2,000 nucleotides. SNPs are found one, every 1,000 to 2,000 nucleotides in the human, human genome.